Welcome everyone, Dr. Mandel. Uh, the topic today is the difference between spondylosis, which is degeneration of the neck or back or anything within the spine, versus ankylosing spondylitis. Many, many requests uh, ask me the differences, so I figure let's get right to business and give you the rundown so we can get this organized. Uh, we are broadcasting live via through the stream as notifications are going out in our chat room. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is degenerative changes. We're talking about spondylosis. We're talking about primarily degenerative, degenerative arthritis, osteoarthritis, primarily within the spine. DJD can still be anywhere in the body, any joint, but spondylosis primarily talking within the spine. So you can see here, look at the vertebrae in the mid-back, look at those bone spurs. That is considered uh, spondylosis. Anytime we have degeneration or changes occurring within the joints or the bones, it could be the front of the bodies, it could be behind the bodies, it could be the facet joints, it could be uh, anywhere, particularly even the IVF and in, in the invertebral foramen, anywhere that's going on those joints can degenerate. And I'm going to tell you how and why. Now, generally, when we have degeneration, you're going to look at the discs between them, and you'll see the disc will thin. As a disc thins, if you look in the back where it says narrow disc space, there's a hole there called the intervertebral foramen or IVF, and that's where the nerve comes out. Let me show you on the spine. If you look here uh, on the spine, just so you can have a better ana anatomical understanding, back, this is the front of the vertebrae. Here is behind it. Uh, those nerves come out at the intervertebral foramen. That's the opening. So if these disc spaces here get narrower, that means that that hole gets smaller, more compression. Very important you understand that because that's why degeneration causes more irritation on nerve roots. So next thing let's, let's go on to is uh, a little bit more uh, involved here. This is showing you the, the different disc problems. Uh, again, on the lower area, the L4, L5, L5, S1, we're looking at the lower back there. Um, I'm sorry, we're looking at the neck here. My mistake. Uh, if we look at the, the, on the right side, we're looking at the lower cervical spondylosis. We're looking at the lower joints. And those lower joints, uh, if you look at where it says spur of bone, uh, that is showing degeneration. That's because the area is unstable. Uh, generally, Wolf's Law, the body will take an area that's unstable, and it will start to add calcium to the area to help stabilize it. Unfortunately, when it adds the calcium, uh, if it's too much or not in the right area and starts affecting the nerve root, uh, that is going to lead to pain discomfort. Now, any anytime we have spondylosis, and by the way, I just want to let everyone know, I attached our recent video we did on spondylosis, things you shouldn't do if you have this, and I attached a great video on spondylosis in the description below. You should check out that video if you'd like more information on that cervical spondylosis. But generally, herniated disc and bulging disc go hand in hand with spondylosis. Let's move up here. Well, wow, that looks familiar, right? Well, anytime we have forward head posture, and you know me, forward head posture, the king of forward head posture, is something that I always talk about, that is causing weakening of the ligaments, pressure on the joints, and allowing more instability. If we look here, uh, we're looking at the uh, healthier disc versus a degenerative disc, and obviously when that disc degenerates, uh, there is going to be involvement of the joints, always. They always seem to go hand in hand. You can see the impinged nerve right there. As that disc gets thinner, that nerve becomes more involved. So if that nerve is coming out of your neck, uh, that nerve could be making its way down the shoulder, arm into the hand and the fingers, tingling, numbness, cramping. If it's going down the end of the chest, pain in the chest or between the shoulder blades or even back underneath the skull or over the head behind the eyes. It can cause headaches, cervicogenic headaches, occipital headaches. When those nerves are irritated, uh, you can tell me uh, primarily what you're experiencing because that is definitely uh, painful. If you look here, lumbar degenerative disc disease, you can see how the outside of the vertebral bodies above and below are starting to change or the irregularity. Look all the way up on top. Look how smooth that is. But look at the discs. They start to thin. They start to get more roughened, those joint spaces. And uh, that is something that you just need to understand. Now, being overweight is going to increase the, the stress on the disc. Old injuries, sports injuries, falls, poor posture, 
uh, sitting incorrectly, long driving, excessive stress in the joints is going to is going to lead to more degenerative changes. Now we're going to come back to uh, right there, uh, ankylosing spondylosis. Uh, let's go back to that picture right there. Okay, let's talk a little bit about ankylosing spondylosis, spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis, and you notice I said spondylosis. Uh, technically, uh, there is degeneration that goes on in there, but when we look at the word spondylitis, because that is the right word that goes with ankylosing, uh, we're looking uh, primarily at an arthritide, more of a autoimmune, potentially hereditary, and we'll talk about why, because there is an antigen known as HLA-B27 that we can find in the blood. It's believed to be an autoimmune or anti or auto-inflammatory type of condition, uh, and this can be seen on blood work. Now, although with this particular condition, uh, this generally starts in the lower back region. Lots of stiffness, lots of achiness, decreased range of motion, sometimes difficulty taking deep breaths. Uh, and uh, this is characterized mainly with stiffness, particularly over the lower back area. More commonly in the lower back, it starts out and kind of works its way up. When you see people more in the advanced phase, you see them leaning over. You can always look at someone, uh, an old man or older lady. Actually, don't have to even be older. I've seen middle-aged people leaning forward. And I'm going to talk about some ways that we can get through this if you are one who has ankylosing spondylitis. So if you look here, uh, we kind of call this a fusion of the bones, more of a bamboo spine. If you look to the right there, look at the left spine, the healthy spine. You can look at the normal discs, then you can see the ankylosing spondylitis starts to get changing around above and below the disc. The ligaments start to fuse in. We start to get fusion on the joints, on the bones, and uh, that causes the bones to fuse with one another. Now, uh, if you look at this, this is the clinical association, HLA-B27. This is the antigen we're talking about for 90% plus people who have ankylosing spondylitis carry this antigen in their blood. Um, and uh, you can see that this antigen, when checked, this does correlate to other conditions like reactive arthritis, juvenile uh, uh, problems, in inflammatory bowel diseases, psoriatic and you can see, you can read this even to uveitis, uh, but there are our conditions, but generally, which uh, HLA-B27, we always will think of ankylosing spondylitis. Now, I'm going to talk briefly about this in just a second, how we can combat and how we can control this thing, because this is the problem, is that no one does anything for it. You got it? Okay, take anti-inflammatories, take non uh medications, but I want to give you the, the be, things you can be proactive to really conquer this thing, at least stabilize it so you can have a normal life. Uh, if you look at this, we're looking at that fusion. See down here, kind of look at that bamboo spine. You kind of get that lightning in the inside, darkening around the outside, uh, and we start to fuse in the front of it. So in other words, this, is, this, this spine is actually fusing because you're starting to get calcification. If you look here, uh, this, see the bamboo spine? This looks, looks like a bamboo. Uh, that is classic for ankylosing spondylitis. Here's another x-ray here of the neck area. By the way, uh, this one here was the lower back. Uh, here is the uh, neck area. You can see that, um, that this uh, is classic. You can look to see how it's kind of all fusing. In between the disc bases, you have that that whitening starting to kind of catch on to the one above and one below. Uh, this is called sacroiliitis. Uh, if you look in the sacroiliac joints uh, on the outside of the sacrum, I can't use a pointer on this, but where the sacrum is and where each side of the pelvis is, where the uh, outside of the sacrum is, it starts to fill in, becomes a little bit whiter. That's classic. That's usually where it starts. A lot of patients that I've seen uh, come in and they're not classic. They don't have the radiographic symptoms. And sometimes uh, it takes many years for it to come. It really depends upon each person. There is no classic, you know, gun ho diagnosis and uh, symptomatic that works, symptomatic uh, type of condition that works for everyone. Everyone is different and has a lot to do with, you know, your uh, diet, your genetics, your, your health, uh, and being proactive along with exercise. Now, if you look here to the left and right, you can look at the difference between the ankylosing spondylitis and the normal. You can see that the spurs, we call them osteophytes. Whenever you have a bone, if you have two bones, and if you notice on both sides on the bone, you can kind of see look like that calcium starting to look like this, attaching to each other. If you look on the right, you don't see that. Uh, that's called the syndesmophyte. Uh, 
syndesmophytes are spurs, but they kind of latch on to each, each vertebrae. Uh, and let me take you back here for a second. Uh, those are syndesmophytes. And if you look here, uh, you see those spurs right there? Let me come to this one here. See those spurs? Those are called osteophytes. So osteophytes kind of comes off the bone like this. Syndesmophytes kind of go up and down and attach each other's bones together. It's kind of what's happening in there. So that's really important that you understand that uh, those are called syndesmophytes. Okay, uh, this last one uh, is the last picture here I wanted to bring out to you. But now a few questions that come up. Well, what do I do if I have this condition? This is an auto, uh, this is an inflammatory condition, an autoimmune condition. Uh, the best thing you can do is strengthen your immune system. You need to make sure that you are more on a anti-inflammatory diet, meaning you need to get rid of all the, a lot of the processed foods, the fried foods. Uh, you need to supplement lots of good omega-3s. You need to really increase and strengthen your immune system. Lots of good juices, uh, exercise, swimming, move, moving around. The best thing is stretching. You know, you can combat this thing. You can slow this thing down. When people are sedentary, you do nothing but sit in your chair uh, and don't do anything, this condition is going to rapidly accelerate. So, you know, there's a lot of good things you can do. I'm big with the anti-inflammatories, kershaw, bromelain, turmeric. Uh, you've got the boswellia with the frank frankincense, uh, the ginger. Uh, there's a lot of great things to keep that immune system strong, but what's going to kill the immune system is excessive sugar. Sugars are destructive. Sugars are inflammatory. Remember, anything that goes on with bone laying, being laid down, inflammation, I don't care if it's rheumatic, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, I don't care if it's lupus erythematosus, I don't care if it's uh, ankylosing spondylitis, it's an inflammatory reaction. Keep inflammation down. It's so, so important. You'll really go a long way, I promise you. I have, oh wow, at least 100 patients over, you know, I don't want to tell you how many years I've been doing this, but uh, several decades. And um, I can tell you that with these conditions, most of them do very well, chiropractic care very well. Can we manipulate and adjust in certain areas? No, but we can do soft tissue. We can kind of increase mobility. That's why it's important you know what you have because x-rays is kind of like your your blueprint. Uh, you know, if you, if you have a blueprint and you're building a house, uh, you don't want to do the wrong thing if it's not going to work because you need to follow the right rules as well as doing the right thing for your health. So uh, that is primarily it. If there's anything else I uh, left out, which I didn't think, but let me just make take a quick look. Um, generally, as we talk about this, this condition, just to give you an insight, uh, rest. When you wake up in the morning, you're usually very, very stiff. And the pain goes away and the stiffness goes away while you're moving around. So once you get up and go, you start to feel better. That's a classic sign, usually in the lower back. So if you have any of these symptoms, it's always good to get checked out. This is just education. I ask you to share this video with others. I think a lot of people can benefit from this. Uh, people really don't realize the difference. One is degenerative changes. Spondylosis or, or degenerative joint disease is degeneration. That just happens from wear and tear, poor posture, forward head posture. And spondylitis or any type of inflammatory condition, particularly in ankylosing spondylitis is an autoimmune or autoinflammatory. So they are two different things. And I, was, I want you to understand that. Um, if you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. I ask you to uh, subscribe to my channel, get the notifications, great cutting edge nutrition, great self-help videos, probably the best self-help videos on the internet. Check out my videos, hundreds of them here, and I hopefully you will be very happy. Uh, check me out, Facebook Motivational Doc. Any type of reviews you can leave for me, I appreciate that. But most important, this is about helping other lives, keeping people healthy, sharing this good information. And may God continue to bless every one of you, and we'll catch up with you real soon. Bye-bye now.